Okay, Coach, uh, just initial thoughts after I'm sure you reviewed everything this morning from last night's game. What, what did you like and maybe what did you not like about last night's performance? Uh, the biggest thing uh, that I would say that uh, I like from watching the film is just the effort that the guys played with. They played with great effort. They played together. Uh, going into that game, it was a lot of unknowns. And so for us to uh, hold the team to six points and play with the effort that they played with, I thought that was awesome. And there were several things that we had to adjust to on the sideline, even with a lot of the check with me stuff that they were doing, something that we have not done a lot of in the past. But I thought they did a good job handling it and adjusting on the fly. What did you think? What did you think of the pressure up front by your defensive line? Um, you know, obviously you got Josh and Lee was able to get, to get some of that pressure as well. What did you think about that group and how they performed? First and foremost, I, I tell those guys all the time, the entire defense, it starts up front. And we, we're going to go as they go. And I thought those guys did a good job of, first and foremost, dominating the line of scrimmage, stopping the run. And I tell those guys all the time, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. And I think they did a good job with that of stuffing those run gaps. And they gave them the ability on third down to get after the quarterback a little bit. And another thing that we did, we was able to roll more guys in, in the game up front because we trust more guys than what we may have done in the past. And so they kept those guys fresh for the duration of the game. You used multiple people in the secondary early in the game. Was that the plan going in and what did you like not you uh, the biggest thing is that uh, those guys have earned the right to be out there and we're not going to put anybody on the field that don't earn their right in practice and the guys know that and we just had a conversation about it in the defensive meeting. If you didn't play as much as you may have wanted to play, earn the right on the practice field because if you earn the right, we're going to put you out there. And so it was also kind of by design with it being so muggy out there and humid to uh, roll some guys early and get them going. You saw the team during camp uh, the scrimmages when the lights were on in the stadium and how do you feel they responded to the atmosphere and the environment? I feel like they responded well for the most part. Like I said, it's still just some little details of things that we really need to get cleaned up because as we get into our boys and in the conference play, we're going to play against some really good opponents that's going to expose us from uh, some of the mental mistakes that we had. So we definitely got to get those cleaned up. But for the most part, that being their first time out there in front of the lights, under the lights, in front of a crowd, I think they handled it pretty well. So I was very proud of them. What's the status of uh, Damari Henderson and Jarvis Ware and how close are they to return? Uh, DeMar, DeMar is on, on, on the road back, and Jarvis, he's just still rehabbing, and we'll, we'll be lucky to get him back when we can. But Damari, he, he should be back here pretty soon. You told us all preseason about Lee Hunter. I think in the first practice you were talking about you know, how much of an improvement you think he was going to make. And we saw it last night, led the team in tackles. What did you see when you saw Lee in action against another team? So I, I actually just had this conversation with the defense. And I say Lee, Lee did not play perfect by a long shot. But Lee, Lee was very effective in that game. But the one thing that you saw about Lee, Lee does that in practice every single day. So that, that was not a surprise to me. And hopefully it was a wake-up call to some of the other guys in the room understanding what you put on that practice field out there will show up in the stadium. So just uh, continuing to uh, be on the guys about their sense of urgency and their practice habits. So it, it was a really good lesson for everybody to learn from Lee with showing how he does on the practice field. But I was really proud and happy for Lee with the way that he played last night. And again, he earned the right to play well, and he did. Max, you know, obviously you guys can give up a touchdown, which I'm sure is a statistic you're really happy about. But what other statistics stood out to you that you, you kind of focused in on that showcase how good your defense played last night? The, uh, stopping the run, that, that was something that uh, I was pretty proud of. I was think they had like 95 yards, 94 yards, something like that. But two came, uh, it was about 30 yards on two plays, one being a quarterback scramble, which is something that we got to get correct on one of the third downs. It was a uh, on the field mistake there. But I, I was proud of how those guys dominated the line of scrimmage up front. And then we, we were pretty clean in our fits at the back of the spot as well. Uh, another thing that I was proud of him about is responding to adversity. Uh, and we talked about the whole offseason about being together, not just as a defense, but as a team. And unfortunately, we turned the ball over three times. But I, I told Coach out of the game, I'm kind of glad it happened. I know y'all not glad, but I'm kind of glad it happened. <laughs> just to see how our guys responded and to not give up any points after three sudden changes, that, that was pretty impressive as well. What did you think of John Walker's night? John, he, he finally got there, got his feet wet. I think he did a really good job. It's obviously some uh, freshman things that he has to get corrected, but the biggest thing was him getting that game experience. And I think he's going to make major strides from week one to week two after actually being out there in the fire. Good. Uh
definitely more sacks than normal for a UCF defense. Was that like a point of emphasis this year, getting to the quarterback? It is. Well, it, it's been three things and that's, since I took this job in December is stop the run, affect the quarterback, and create turnovers. And that's something that I put in front of them every single day. It's something that every single day we go out down there in practice field, it, it's always been emphasized. I'm a big believer you get what you emphasize. And as long as we keep putting it in front of them, I think they'll continue responding and doing a good job with it. They didn't panic. They didn't panic. That's one thing that we talk about all the time. Don't, don't when the ball's in the air, don't panic and plan technique, not reaching and grabbing, uh, just playing their technique. And I think they did a good job with it. The Jordan Mask, obviously an experienced guy from Texas State. You talk about what he did to earn the starting job at, at nickel, um, and then his individual effort last night on that interception. The Jordan, he's one that is uh, very consistent, and, and Coach Gibbs says it all the time, if a DB can play in the game and disappear, he probably had a pretty good game more. Same goes for practice, and obviously he had that one splash play, which was a really impressive play, something that we have not had made here in the past, but the Jordan, he's just consistent, man. He's consistent, and you can trust him, so I was definitely happy that he was able to make a play in his first game uh, here as a night. Madison, you guys are going on the road to Boise State, five-hour flight. What's what's going to be the message to the players to kind of keep them focused? You got a couple extra days to prepare for that. For a road game like this, what what would you want to see from them and, and their focus to prepare for that? We're going into a hostile environment. Uh, I believe over the last like 20 years, or it may be longer than that, they're like in the top five or top 10 win percentage. So just them understanding us, us being able to execute and us being together is going to be the number one deal. And so we got to get things cleaned up from this game because there's some stuff that we put on tape last night that was not, not pleasing, okay? And then the other team, they're going to sit and they're going to try to expose us and see if we got it fixed. So the biggest thing is just working on us this particular week. And I think we'll be fine going on the road towards it. How much does it help has happened, you know, your game over two days before Boise and sure you could be watching them if you want on Saturday afternoon. From a game planning standpoint, does that help a lot to kind of give you a leg up in preparation? Most of the time it does, but they have a new offensive coordinator. So that's something that's a, that's a bit different, okay? And obviously, like everybody, I believe they play Washington. Uh, they went back and looked at some of his old stuff. So we've done the same thing, but we're still not going to know. So really going into that game, similar to this past game with a lot of unknowns, but at least we will see that game uh, on Saturday and we'll have a, at least a little better idea on what we may see. We always hear coaches say big improvements from week one to week two. From your experience, do you believe that? And how has that come to be? I do believe it because again, guys are on the practice field. They're playing in the stadium with no crowd. A lot of times scrimmages are on Saturday morning. But to actually get in the stadium under their lights with the fans there, it's just a totally different atmosphere, a totally different vibe. And so those guys experiencing that, now they know what to expect. And I know we're going to go in many hostile environments, but obviously the bounce house is one of the best venues in the country. So our guys have actually felt that. So I think they'll be better for it coming next week, especially a lot of the new guys. Obviously, Kent State had both of these things. But is it tougher to prep for a team with a new roster or a new uh, personnel or a, a new coach, new scheme? Yes, it is tough because you, you really don't know what you're going to get. And uh, I think we had a good idea on what we may have seen with some of the carryover that they, the holdovers that they had on that particular style. But they did do a few things that was a bit different and that we had to get adjusted to. So that, and that, that is not on the players, that's on myself as the coordinator and our coaches to see those different things and get adjusted to it on the sideline. Y'all cover guys, uh, Malachi Lawrence. You got in there last night. We've heard a lot about him. You know, Sean Peterson is another guy. First year UCF. How do you think those those two guys did in their uh, sort of their UCF debuts in a way? I think they both did a good job. Uh, I believe Malachi got in on the sack. Uh, Sean was close to getting in on one. He missed the guy early and allowed him to get back to the line of scrimmage. But for those for those guys to get their first, you know what I'm saying, extended game reps, I, I was pretty proud of them. And it's some things that they need to work on. But I think they'll see it on tape and get it corrected. How did it feel for you? First game under your belt? Uh, going into it or after the game? Yeah, just going into it and going you're experiencing it. it. Uh, it, it it's crazy. I really didn't have any crazy feelings. I told my wife uh, a couple days before, like, hey, man, I'm, am I supposed to be nervous? I, I really don't know, but I wasn't. And, and I think it just goes into the way that I've prepared myself over the last few years, preparing myself to be in this spot. And so I really didn't have any, any jitters going into it. And I feel like when you prepare, it gives you a certain confidence, not a cockiness, but a certain confidence that you can go execute, which is the same thing that I tell those players every single day. When you prepare the right way, 
everything else to take care of itself. And so I, I was prepared for the moment and obviously it's some things that I gotta get cleaned up because I know we hadn't talked about it with some of the third downs. I, uh, I, I messed the guys up a little bit. I should not have called some of the things that I called. So I get that those things corrected and we'll be better for it moving forward. How important is kind of that relationship amongst the coaching staff? David Gibbs, he, now this will be your third year working with him. Mean, he's kind of like the D coordinator on the field. Is that kind of the dynamic? Uh, yeah, we're, we're in constant communication uh, throughout the course of a series and when, when we're on the sideline as a defense just saying, hey, what do you like here? Hey, would this be better than this? So he's one, he's done it a long time and I trust him uh, with the relationship that we has and he's one that I bounce off ideas off of all the time. I even called him last night like, hey man, you can't let me do that. You, you got to say something. So he's like, nope, I'm not. But I'm like, no, no, you got to help me right there. So no, we have a great relationship and I, I, I trust his opinion for sure. How would you evaluate the communication you saw from the players during the game? With all the check with me that uh, they did, and sometimes I checked, sometimes I didn't, I thought it was a really, really good job by them. And that's something that we've harped on, communication as a defense on all three levels up, because a lot of times you just talk about it in the secondary, but all three levels have to be on the same page. And I thought those guys did a good job of communicating with some of the different formations we've seen and some of the different uh, checks, getting in and out of checks. I thought they did a good job, and even then, pace uh, situation when they're going up tempo, I thought we did a good job of communicating and getting lined up. Speaking of the secondary, a 74 yard touchdown got called back due to the penalty in that first half. How did you think your guys responded to that and just held them to six? I think they responded well, you know, because in, in the past, a lot of those times we would have got our heads down, which we did have a little lower energy at some points throughout the game and we'll get that corrected. But uh, I thought they responded well with it and it was a uh, physical error that we, uh, te a technique error, I should say, that when we watch the tape this morning, we got it corrected and hopefully that won't happen again. What'd you think about the tackling you saw? It can be better. It can be a lot better, but I'm, I'm realistic as well. We've tackled, that's probably our third time tackling since we played in the ball game against Duke. So I know we'll get better as we go. And so I'm gonna ask a strange question, but Boise State obviously known for the blue turf. How, when you guys are, is that something you have to think about, prepare for? I mean, it's a different color. It's, it, even on TV, it looks kind of strange sometimes. Is that something you've talked about with the players or even yourself, maybe, when you think about that? We've talked about it as a staff. Have not put it in front of the players yet. We'll, we'll turn the page and do that on Sunday, but we're going to do some different things here prep-wise that could potentially help us out there, but it is going to be a different deal. It's going to be a different deal for myself, just like it will be for the players, but it's just going to be a matter of us getting just remain calm early in the game, and then we'll get used to it as we go. Because I know the altitude out there is something that uh, is a bit different as well. So we just got to settle in early, and then we'll, we'll be fine down the stretch. When do you do your first walkthrough when you're in Boise? We're starting Sunday. We're starting on Sunday with us having all these up. Uh, but I mean, when you get there. When we get there. When, you, when do you see the field for the first time? In the past, it's been different for us traveling. Sometimes we go to the site on that Friday when we get there. Sometimes we don't go to the day of. It just depends on how close or how far we're staying from that particular uh, venue. And I'm not sure exactly how far we are, but I'm sure we're pretty close. We'll go by there on Friday once we land. You'd like to see it the day before. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's all, sir. Yes, I appreciate you guys. Thank you.